the recording, please know that you can always, you know, keep your camera turned off so that you don't have to worry about your your face being on the recording. So hello everyone and welcome to the TRIO SSS wrap up meeting. Here is the agenda. We're going to go through it pretty quickly. What I would ask is if all of the students could put their names in the chat so that we can count your attendance as one of our TRIO SSS activities. You can do that anytime before the end of this meeting. Um, first thing that we would like to, you can hear, you can hear my son in the background. First thing that we, yeah. first thing that we'd like to talk about really quickly is the um, office and lab hours for the summer. Trio SSS is a 12 month program. So we are in the office January through December. That means even in the summer when you guys are out and you are uh, at the beach and doing fun stuff, we are in the office. So someone is going to be in the office Mondays through Fridays, 8.30 to 4.30 no. until June. Okay. Until June. And then in June, I know what you were going to say, Miss Kelly, right? Yep. That in, go ahead. No, finish, finish. I should right. have put you off. That's all right. In June, the college starts summer hours, which means that the entire college is only open Mondays through Thursdays, but that's from 8.30 a.m. until 5 o'clock p.m. So in June and July is when we are there Mondays through Thursdays. Uh, the lab will always be open with social distancing whenever someone is in the office. If you need to make appointments, you remember you can do it through email or through Starfish, and you can do it for phone or in person or for video conferencing. We'll do anything, even if you'd like to Google chat or whatever you need to do, we'll somehow make it work if you have a question. Uh, second thing that we'd like to talk about is some of the to-dos before you turn your brain off for the summer. First thing, well, I didn't even write this one, but this is the real first thing. Go to and finish all of your finals. Um, most students have finals through when? When do most of you have finals until? Anyone? You could put it in the chat. The 11th, I think. The 11th? That sounds about right, I think. Okay. Um, so most of your, most students are going to be doing their finals through, you know, the 11th. So make sure that you get to all of your finals and you complete them. If you have any questions about if something is submitted, especially if it's electronic, Always remember just to email a professor and ask because I'd rather you ask a professor than realize you might have missed something. All right, check your grades. Grades are due from professors by the 12th, which means after the 12th, you should be able to see your grades. Check them and make sure they are correct. If they're not correct, email your professors and TRIO SSS ASAP because you have to, if you want to appeal a grade or make a change, usually do it within two weeks of the grade being posted. If you fail any classes, and I'm hoping that you're not, but if you fail any classes, please re-register for the courses that you fail. When you repeat a course, the F isn't calculated into your GPA. So right after you complete the class in what, fall of 2021, it will up your GPA because the failed F will be taken out and the new grade that you get will be put back in. So it's always good to re-register for classes right after you fail them. Um, another thing is to consider registering for summer courses. I'll tell you right now, summer courses are really great this semester. They are cheap. They're buy one, get one, and they're only about $1,524. That's for two classes. And if you receive Pell, that means that you have two classes that you're getting for $1,524. And once you complete both classes, Pell pays for almost all of it. Uh, talking to financial services, we found that most students 
who have full Pell and take two classes over the summer. That means you could take two in summer one, two in summer two, or one in summer one and one in summer two, or, and are paying less than $200. That's $200 for two classes, which is amazing. I don't know where you're going to be able to take two college classes for, for that low price. Um, if you have a larger balance and you need some help, remember that TRIO SSS does have grant aid that is available to everyone. Um, or everyone they must that complete help. the class. They must yes. complete the classes, must. Yes, that's, thank you, Ms. Kelly. I didn't even put that in here and that's a really big thing. You must complete the, cl the classes to receive your Pell and um, to receive the buy one, get one. So register for the classes and complete them. Really, it, summer classes are a little more intensive, but uh, professors are really willing to work with you and they, they go by pretty fast. Uh, I, I took a lot of summer classes as an undergraduate and I liked them. So they're a great way to speed up your journey to graduation. Plus Next you have thing. us, they have, yeah. you have us to help you. Yep, we're here all God, all summer, which means we also have tutors available all summer and we have smart thinking online tutoring that's available all summer also. The next thing we want you to remember is that you need to register for your fall 2021 classes. If you have not registered, you need to let us know because we might be able to help you so that you can register. Is everyone here registered or is someone not registered? If you're not registered, Remember to email one of us because we will help you. Or if there's a reason why you're not registered, we might be able to help you overcome that barrier too. I don't want you, none of us want you to be struggling at the end of the summer in August, trying to pick classes and feeling like they're waitlisted or they're closed or that you're behind the eight ball. If you do it now, we can help out. Then check your balance. Make sure that they are you are full-time and that you're getting your full-time financial aid. Remember, full-time is three course units and labs at our school do not count as course units. So if you are registered for say, I'm thinking, um, writing 109, which is one course unit, chemistry 120, which is one course unit, and chemistry 120L, which is a lab, you are only registered for two labs you are only registered for two course units that means that you are technically full-time and you need another class to be full-time what happens miss kelly if you're not full-time no financial aid you have to pay for the full ride yep that's going to do that don't want to do that it's about fifteen thousand dollars so please you know make sure that you are full time so that you can receive all of the financial aid uh that you deserve um one other thing about courses some of you may have had difficulties in a course this semester it's been difficult times for everybody and you're not sure and you're fearful that you have an F or something, it's always good to reach out to the professor. Always good. And if you haven't completed a course, if, if you think you're going to fail it, let us know because we can help you either, like Ms. Dilk said, re-register or maybe we could, um, if you get an incomplete we can help you, but you must, if you have an incomplete, you must submit the work or you're going to get an F. And sometimes you get caught up in being fearful and you don't want to admit that you have a problem. That's why we're here. We're here. You, you can tell us whatever it is. We can sort it out and hopefully we can get it fixed for you guys. Okay. And I know some of you know about that. You wait, you wait, you wait because you're scared or you're nervous or you're depressed. Let us know. Let us help you. Okay. This is the time. Let us know. The earlier you let us know, 
the better the outcome will be. It's always easier to help you if we can help you as soon as possible. And we're all here to help you. Me, Ms. Kelly, Serge, uh, we, we are really close with professors, with advising, with the registrar's office, with financial aid. We will help you and be your advocate on campus. But Ms. Kelly's right. Now is not the time just to you know put a, a blanket over your head and not think about things. Let us know so we can help you while professors are still checking emails, while people are still on campus and not taking vacations, while things are happening. And we want to make sure that you're okay. We want to yeah. make sure you're happy, you're healthy, you're you're safe. And if we don't know those things, we we can't help. So next. If you check your balance and after all of your financial aid and after all of your loans, you find that you still have a balance, you can fill out the grant aid application that's available on Blackboard. Priority, as per the government, is for students who are in their first and second year, but we can give to students who are in their third or fourth year if there's extenuating circumstances. So we do, again, have money available for the summer, and then our grant starts again next year and we'll have money available for other semesters. We try really, really hard to make sure we give money to as many students as we can, but we don't know unless you let us know. Next, um, this is another financial thing. Apply to outside scholarships over the summer while you have the time. If you're not taking classes or you have a break and you have nothing else to do, these are two websites that are really great. They are outside or off-campus scholarship searches, FastWeb and Big Future. You go in and you start searching, and you might be a student who is um, taking biochemistry and wants to be a cytotechnologist. Well, there might be a random scholarship that's available for students who are biochemistry majors who want to be cytotechnologists. Some of them are even really like funny ones and they're for much small, they're for small amounts. Mm -hmm. The last time I looked at FastWeb, there was one from an organization for cats. And if you wrote an essay about why you loved cats, you could receive $50. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot of money, but that's probably one of your books or part of one of your lab books because I know those are expensive. So start uh, looking. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Ted, how much is a lab book? How much is a what? A lab, one of your labs for some of your uh, classes. How much is a regular book for you? Uh, so luckily for me, most of my books, I, I had it by my uh, professor. They just, you know, did the online book and then everything. But the book I had to, to buy was for my writing class, and I paid, like, I think 100 or 120 Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 100 or 120 that's a lot of money. So if you can find even what they call micro scholarships on some of these, guys, I would go ahead and do it. If you need help writing um, essays for them or you need recommendation letters for them, ask us. We can write you recommendation letters for anything, including outside scholarships. Um, I would also say start looking at the books that you need and um, Oh, we're going to do that in a little bit. So hold on. And uh, the last thing, and we can't stress it enough, Serge, do you want to say this one? Because it was your biggest pet peeve. What is it? Check your email. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at don't, your emails. That is so annoying. Just <laughs> answer the email. That's it. Just open it up and just go and answer it back. That's it. Even if you're not scheduled for classes, check your email. There might be something yeah. really important that's happening or somebody might be talking to you, especially if you're on the wait list for a fall class. Yes. They email you and you have 48 hours or sometimes 24 hours to tell them yes or no if you're going to take the, the spot in the, in the class that's waitlisted. If you don't check, you'll lose that spot. It'll go to the next person who's waitlisted. So you really, really, really want to make sure that you check your email, I would say at least three times a week during the summer, even if you're not taking classes. Delete the stuff you don't need, answer the stuff that you do. Please answer Serge. This is his, this is his pet peeve. 
Um, okay. Yeah. Also, Good. yeah, I have something. They could actually just put the email as a, a notification on their phone. So anytime there's a no notification from the email, it just pop up on, like, text messages. Oh, maybe you're going to have to show us that so that we can show students how to do something like that. I know you can put your away message, but I don't know how it pops up. Also, you can get things forwarded. You can get your school email forwarded to your personal email. So if you don't want to check your school email, get it forwarded to your personal email. It'll mean your personal email will get a lot of emails, but you won't have to check two. Um, some hints for fall. That's the next thing on our agenda. Uh, most classes next semester are at least partially in person. That means a lot of your classes you'll be meeting once in person and then probably once either virtually or asynchronously. That means that you'll do work and, you know, hand it in through Blackboard. Make sure you set up your schedule so you know where to be and when you have to be there. Uh, we haven't done that in what? One, two, three semesters. Oh my. Wow. So it's going to be weird to start doing that, but you want to make sure you know where you're going and what days you have to be there. When you're in person, introduce yourself. Professors are nicer to students whose names they know. I can say that as a professor and as the student who knew that when professors knew my name, they were nicer to me. They're nicer when they can put a face with a name. All you have to do is say, hi. Hi, my name is Ted and I'm your, in your math class. It makes a big difference. It shows that you're personable and that you're professional. Always also put your name at the end of any emails you send to professors. Just because your name is in your BC email address doesn't mean that you shouldn't put it as a signature. It's a big thing. It's also good to know your professor's name. Oh my God, yeah. When talking to students, like, what's your professor's name? Uh, uh, I don't know. If you need support from your professors, you know their name, they generally help you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just some little simple tips. It's so much easier when you go anywhere else on campus and you say, oh, per my, my professor, what professor? And you're right, Miss Kelly. I don't know. Well, is it a man or a woman? I think it's a man. No, just know their names. It makes it so much easier to talk to financial aid. It makes it so much easier to talk to anyone in tutoring. And it's really quick. You have to learn what? Four or five names a semester. That's not terrible. And it's on your Blackboard. It's on Starfish. Their names are all over the place. If you have online classes that are totally online or um, synchronous or asynchronous, remember, synchronous means that at least one class you guys are all doing together via Zoom or Google Meet. And asynchronous means it's all online and all through Blackboard. You just receive the information, do the work, and post it. Remember to log on to those courses the first week of classes. If you don't, it triggers a flag and says that you are not attending. And if you don't attend the first two weeks, the school's system kicks you out of that class. We've had so many students who have had issues because they were kicked out of a class and then they were part-time. So they went from owing nothing and receiving a refund to owing $9,000 for their two part-time classes. We don't want that to happen to you. So always log on to those online classes, especially the first two weeks. And if you have an issue with your technology, getting into Blackboard, getting into your portal, always let us know. Ted, did you raise your hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talk I was going to uh, talk about, you know, actually knowing the professor personally. Go yeah. ahead. That's like, it's really good. Because I really know a lot of professors like Dr. Cook. Uh, Professor Benjamin, Zeron, and then some other guy too. And I had to pass my programming class. It was like, if I don't pass it, I don't graduate. And then, but I don't really know much about programming because I'm a math major. So, uh, Professor Benjamin, he's been helping me lately through Zoom classes. Like, but he teach me abstract algebra. Instead of that, he's now helping me on programming. So it's very good to you know professors on a personal level. Wow, that's really nice of Dr. Benjamin. Ted, what I would say is after the semester, you might want to, uh, even if you thank, thank him every time, thank yeah. him thank him for that. Because 
that's really awesome that a math professor is helping you with programming because he wants you to succeed and he wants you to succeed because he knows who you are. So, you know, use your professors as your mentors. Oh, Ted, I'm really happy. I, I know um, other, like I'll just tell other students, but there are other professors that speak so highly of, of Ted, especially Dr. Cook. And um, that's because he makes an effort to get to know them and to have, you know, a very nice either working or academic relationship with those professors. So take Ted's lead. He does a really good job with that. And when it comes time, if he decides to go to graduate school, he has a lot of professors who will remember him a year or two years from now when he wants a recommendation. Yeah, there's like over five recommendations. Yeah, yeah. that's really great. Go you, Ted. Yeah. You, you you are smart. You're you're a smart cookie doing that. Um, next semester, don't forget our resources. We have peer tutors. We have smart thinking, 24-7 online tutoring. We have our lab that's available for all of your printing needs. Um, hopefully next semester we'll be able to open the lab for more hours as we let student workers stay after staff leaves. Um, we have a reference library. We have calculators if you need them. We have all of these things that we have for you and they're just waiting there. So remember the resources and use them. They're free to you. And some of them cost uh, you know, some money, so use them for free. Also look at the books that you have for next semester. Um, if you have classes that are gen eds or that aren't part of your major and you can't afford them, check out our reference library. It's on Blackboard. We might be able to offer you um, a, a hard copy book or an ebook that you can use. Um, well, if it's a hard copy book, you can use it in the lab, you can use it in our office, you can PDF it, you can take pictures of it, you can make copies of it, whatever you need. But if books are an issue or paying for books is an issue, look at our reference library. Uh, I will also next year see if Student Affairs is doing a book grant again, as they were this year. And if they are, SSS will give you that information. So and you can for, donate books if you have some and you want to clear off your bookshelves. Donate them. To yeah, us. we love yeah, we love donations. Malik, who's graduating this year, has been so generous and has given us so many books. And we write his name in there. We say, you know, generously donated by Malik Brown. And then the year he's going to graduate, we'll do the same for you. And we thank you. If you don't need the book, there might be somebody else on campus who does. And if you're just going to get a, you know, a dollar or two selling it back, just give it to us. We love free books. That's a smart one, Miss Kelly. I forgot about that. Okay, events. So this Thursday night at five o'clock, we are doing our graduate recognition ceremony. It's going to be virtual from five to 6 p.m. And I have the link here, and then I am going to put the link in our, there we go. I put it in the chat here in case you're interested. If you would like to celebrate one of your friends that is graduating and from the SSS program and from the college, please don't hesitate to come. Let's celebrate those who are finishing their journey here at Bloomfield and you know, let's give them a great send off even though we can't do it in person. We decided not to do it in person because there were so many variables with weather and having to buy tents and making sure we had enough room that we didn't want people to feel uncomfortable if there wasn't social distancing. So we decided that we would just pull the trigger and do it virtually. Um, we also did it very early before finals truly start because we want graduates to be available for all of the graduation festivities. And I know they start coming hard and fast in the next few weeks. So we wanted to do ours before other ones so that we make sure all of our students are there. So, um, if you are, if you have a couple minutes and you want to stop in to give a round of applause to somebody, please do so. If you have anything really nice to say about a specific graduate or you want to give some good luck sentiments or some, you know, you know, hopeful words of advice to students, all you have to do is email Surge 
Miss Kelly or I and let us know and we'll include it in the program. So you can actually be part of the program even if you're not graduating. We want our students to feel like they're celebrated not only by us and by the college, but by other TRIO students as well. So if you know someone or you just want to say good luck, we're, I'm really proud of you, you let us know and we'll put, you in, we'll put that in the program. You can even videotape it if you want and we'll play the video. Um, question for students. You don't have to answer now, but we're going to see. Is anyone interested in um, TRIO funding some outside cu cultural events this summer? Zoos, outside concerts. I, that's the only two I could think of. Would you guys be interested in doing anything with SSS over the summer? Or would you rather that we start those kinds of events in the fall? I think it would be fun to do in the fall. Okay. Are people more, okay, Azaria says the fall, yeah, Raymond says like, the fall. Yeah. All right, all right. If you guys feel like the fall is a better idea, then we'll start thinking of those cultural events in the fall. Um, Ms. Kelly and I were very um, happy to go right before COVID started to go to uh, a Broadway play with our students. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to do something like that again, either in the fall or spring semester. We had such a wonderful time and we, we got to see such a, a um, the fall sounds like a plan to me. I see you, Tyler. Um, we hope that we can do those things with our students again. Tyler, didn't you get to go see Wicked? I'm almost positive you did. I think I have pictures of that. And that reminds me, I'm going to put yeah. them. Yep, I'm going to put them in the next year's graduation uh, recognition ceremony. So, um, yeah, we had we always have a really good time. And if you guys would like to do that kind of stuff in the fall, know that over the summer we're going to start thinking of some of the things that we can do with <laughs> social distancing and, you know, all of that good stuff. If you have any ideas of something that you'd like to do, please let us know. We're open to everybody's ideas. Um, in the fall, Miss Kelly is going to do a mentoring program. And she's interested in juniors and seniors, or if you're a sophomore, but you're, you know, you're really passionate about mentoring, she wants you to maybe mentor one of our incoming students. If you're interested, please email Miss Kelly, Celeste underscore Walden Kelly, for more information. Again, I'm going to put that in the chat so that you have it. Um, this is the first but time we're going to as, as the intern. <clears throat> Ville. Yes, you can also email Victoria Ville if you're interested. I'll put her stuff in the chat too. Victoria. She is our intern that's going to help us with this. We're hoping to have some really um, like an orientation meeting maybe a, a really fun event for the mentors and the mentees. We're not going to be asking for a lot of your time, uh, just for you to be there for a student who is transitioning from, you know, school, from high school into college or transferring from another college to Bloomfield College. It's gonna be way different for everybody and sometimes students need a helping hand. We're there, but you know, a lot of the times they listen a little better to you guys. So we really encourage you to become mentors and we really hope that you can do it. Ms. Kelly, do we have an idea of not much time we're going to ask for them to offer, correct? It's, it's not much time, but it's basically what you guys do anyway. So you're a psych major and you meet a freshman who's a psych major. You can give them a little advice. Hey, take this professor. Don't take this professor. Or how do you get through statistics? You know, things like that. Nursing the nursing department is very, you know, difficult. So how do you study? Do you need a study group? Um, our CAT students, they have a total um, different world that they're involved in. And who would be better to talk to a, a new CAT student than you? So the whole point is just to help somebody along. You don't have to teach them. Uh, maybe you want to tutor them but at least you can help them, you know, work their way through college. You know how intimidated it can be, intimidating it can be in the beginning. 
So it's not going to be a lot of time, but just helping hand, just somebody to like what we try to do. Um, when you get a little lost, a little confused, you'll have somebody to reach out to. But if you need somebody who's on your level, your peer, then that you'll have a peer mentor. Plus, it's something great that'll go that could go on your resume that yes. you worked in a legitimate peer, a, a legitimate mentoring program. We're also looking into maybe some certification for it. So maybe you could even be certified. That's some of the stuff we're going to be doing over the summer, trying to look for the best ways to do this. Um, fall, you know, we usually repeat a lot of the programs that we did that were successful, but we are always you know, um, looking toward you guys to help us find some new workshop ideas. Is there something we're missing? Is there something that you wish we would do? Do you want, you know, someone who knows a lot about financial literacy to come speak about you know, how creating a budget? Or do you want to know about what to do when you have to start repaying your um, student loans? Or do you want to have a workshop about how to write lit reviews or annotated bibliographies or how to create your LinkedIn? Whatever you want, tell us. We'll try to put any, any kinds of workshops that you think will be helpful. We will put them on the board. We also want to know the things that didn't work. Workshops that you looked at and you were like, Ugh, I would rather, <laughs> I would rather do another microbiology lab than go to this workshop. Um, no offense to microbiology. Um, but let us know because if something is really terrible or you really think that it's just not useful, we won't include it anymore. But we don't know. I graduated many moons ago when dinosaurs walked the earth. So you might need something that I don't know about, uh, or Miss Kelly doesn't know about, or Serge doesn't realize. And the only way we understand is if we get some real input from you guys. So don't hesitate to tell us. We're not offended by anything. You know, we take all of it. And I don't know. Sometimes we're offended, but not bad. Um, <laughs> only, I'm only offended if you don't like my joke. Um, I take them very seriously. Um, but yeah, we really want to know and we take your constructive criticism very seriously. The only way that we can do better as a program is if you tell us which way we have to go. Um, important dates and information. So some dates are that the summer one semester starts on May 24th and it ends on July 9th. And summer two begins on July 12th and ends August 27th. And fall classes begin August 30th. So that's just a little idea of knowing if you're taking classes, that's when they start. But everyone should realize that fall classes start August 30th. Um, I have put this agenda into Blackboard in our online information. So you can always grab it there. And I am probably getting a phone call from someone telling me my car has an ex has an expired warranty. So hold on one second. Yep. So um, you can access this whenever you need. And it also has, again, the link for the graduate ceremony. If you'd like us to send you a Google invite for the graduate ceremony, you let us know and we can do that too. So you can put it right into your calendar. Other than that, I am finished with all of my yakking. <laughs> Does anyone else, Miss Kelly or Serge, have anything to say before we at least stop the recording and just Talk for a sec, or are we good? Seniors, are you clear of what I think that you went through graduation everything. is? Are you clear? Because you know we're having quite a few. So um, make sure you are sure of the day and time of your graduation. You don't want to be late for that. Yes, you definitely don't want to be late for that. You also, if you need regalia, you have to speak to student affairs. I don't think that you can order it any longer online. So the only way you can get caps and gowns, I think, is if student affairs all has a bulk order 
and can give you one. So if you need it and you want to walk, you got to do it ASAP. Keisha and I don't even know if they'll have it. I haven't heard back yet. That hasn't been confirmed yet. Yeah, I, I'm, we're not exactly sure. Um, I think someone... Ted, we have your name already. Oh, we have your info, Ted, because Ted, yeah. you know, Ted made sure he let us know that he needs. Um, uh, yeah. um, also, I don't really have enough information about, you know, the graduation day and all that stuff. Have you seen the website for the for school, for the college that has the commencement info? Oh, uh, okay. I have to go. I'll yeah, see. it's right on the portal. Yep, okay. it's right there, and it gives you everything. Times, um, family, you know, how to how to get your your um your guests there, what time people have to be there. It's all there on the portal on the commencement information. So two tickets. Just two. Yes, two. Oh, okay. Even if your, you know, family is the president of the United States, only two tickets. Yeah. Okay. Only two. Um, they're, you know, they said that if anything changes and they allow more people, they might think of having three. But so far, that is not the case. So make sure you ask. You know, make sure you ask. Student for affairs is your family. Is the best. Yeah, student affairs is the best go-to place for information, student affairs. Absolutely, student affairs knows everything. So send them information or email or questions if you have them. But best place to do is go look online. Yeah. Um, I am going to stop the recording. Should we stop the recording and ask questions? Any other Q and A? So I am going to stop the recording and then ask you guys if you have any questions because I know sometimes people are uncomfortable asking questions if things are recorded.